Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker. It's great to have you here on the Keith Barker channel where our goal here is to help give you the best tools and tips today to help you get your CCNA. One of those big tips is practice, practice, practice. Just watching or just reading is not enough to really cement and get those skills honed in. So part of that, I've created some Packet Tracer Labs and that's what I wanna share with you in this video is a brand new Packet Tracer Lab that you can download and start working on right now. So this Packet Tracer Lab, let me get out my pen here. This Packet Tracer Lab is downloadable from thekeithbarker.com. You just go right there. I'll also put a link in the description so you can get at it. And then if you scroll down here, there are Packet Tracer Labs. No, I was just counting up. There's a lot of these, uh, four, eight, 12, and uh, 16. So I've got 16 so far, including the one I did today. So just click on the download link here for Cisco PT routing and more T-Shoot with today's date as far as this recording and you are good to go. So let me share with you the lab and also a hidden tip uh, so as far as a routing protocol that we may, not, we may not be as familiar with, but it's important to know for your CCNA, even though it's not explicitly called out in the blueprint. So I'd like to share that with you as well. All right, so here are the objectives. This PC right here, let me get my pin out. All right, this PC right here, PC2, it cannot ping the Wi-Fi client over here. So what we do is find out what that IP address is on the Wi-Fi client and then try to ping it, verify that it doesn't work and then troubleshoot that. And then secondly, uh, the PC to this guy right here cannot open the web page at thekeithbarker.com, which is this server. So here's some IP addresses of the wireless LAN controller. This server is acting as the AAA DNS NTP in the web server. It's at 103010. And if there's passwords that pop up there, it's going to be Cisco one, two, three with the capital C, uh, Cisco exclamation mark two, three with the capital C in front. All right. Uh, also for bonus points, the NTP that is currently being used on the multi-layer switch network time protocol. You know what? It could use a little bit of love. It's not doing any authentication with the NTP server. And I would love for that to happen. So that's part of this lab as well. Okay. So uh, that's your task. It could be anything in this path, routing and switching wise. I think there's some HSRP in there perhaps as well. And also one thing I'd like to do is, and I can use this lab as a backdrop to do it, is let's talk about administrative distance just as a quick reminder about how that works. If there is a router, let's pretend we have a router. Actually, this is three routers, boom, boom, boom. And this is, this is the 10.1.0 network right here. And if a router like, Let's take router three. If router three is learning about the 10.1.0 network with the 24-bit mask, and it's learning about it several ways. It's learning about it via OSPF. Great. If it's learning about it via <laughs> RIP, nah, not so great. If it's learning about it via EIGRP, if it's learning about it via BGP, and we'll call that external BGP, just to make sure it's clear. The question is, if R3, which this is pretty much uh, a hypothetical situation because running all those routing, routing protocols on one router isn't too typical. But anyway, if it were, and that one route was being advertised by all these four, which one would make it in the routing table? Or would it load, uh, load balance across all of them? And the answer is the way that routes get in is in the video called, why do routes have to win twice? They have to win once based on AD and get into the routing table. So OSPF, if you know what the AD is for that, that's fantastic. And RIP and EAGRP and external BGP. And I think the numbers would be something like OSPF is a 110. RIP is like 120. EAGRP for internal EGP would be 90. And BGP external would be 20. So that one route would only show up in the routing table, the winner's table, based on the BGP route. That's what would show up because BGP has, it's like golf, the lowest score wins. All right. Um, one other thing I want to share with you that's important, again, it's not on the, well, it's not quite on the blueprint, but EIGRP does have a interesting way of calculating a metric. And I just want to give you a heads up about that. So it's like, I know I, it's like this, hey, don't tell me about EIGRP. I don't want to know. You want to know about this. This is one of the tips and tools you need today. <laughs> that's going to help you get your CCNA. You want to know this. So, um, ears up. Uh, also, I have it in the lab, so you can see it as well if you'd like to, although that may or may not be one of the problems involved. Okay, so with the EIGRP, it goes like this. With the EIGRP, it's a distance vector routing protocol, and distance vector means routing by rumor. So R1 says, hey, I know about the 1010 network, and R2 says, uh, thanks, and R2 says, hey, I know about the 1010 network, and R3 says, great, and it 
passes it on. And so the metric that EAGRP uses is calcul it's, it's called a composite metric, M-E-T-R-I-C. And this metric is made up of the two factors. It is the sum of delays. And let me explain that real quick. Let's imagine that this is 10 gig and one gig. And uh, actually, let me, I'm going to change that. I'm going to make this 1.54 megabits per second, which is really slow compared to 10 gig. And this is fast Ethernet. Perfect. Here we go. So well, what would happen as far as um, the delays go? Each of these are going to have an associated delay. Let's imagine the gigabit is like 10 microseconds. Let's call it 10, 10 microseconds. And the one here might be uh, 1,000 just to make it a lot worse. And the fast Ethernet would be maybe uh, 30. And there are some defaults in place. I don't, I don't recall off the top of my head what those defaults are. So what happens is when this route is being advertised, uh, because R1 owns is directly connected, it would say, OK, for delay, I've got 10. And R2 would say, great. And this interface I'm on is 1,000. So it would say that's uh, 1,000 plus 10. That'd be 1,000. I'm doing the long math here. 1,010. And that's what it would advertise to R3. And so when R3 has that advertised delay of 1,010, it would say, oh, this interface it came in on is 30 microseconds. And it would say, OK, so that's 1,010 plus 30. That would be 1,040. And that's the part of the calculation. So when R3 has this composite metric that it's going to calculate, it's going to use that value, which is the sum of all the delays. Now, R3, it doesn't really know the details of what the delay is two hops away or three hops away. It's just taking the value that was learned by its neighbor or shared by its neighbor and that's taking it. So the, the sum of the delays would be from R3's perspective, 1,040. So distance vector routing protocols, uh, not super smart. I mean, they don't have an accurate picture of everything in the network. They're just believing everything that their neighbor is saying. So R3 would think the sum of the delays is 1040, which is part of the metric. And the other part that goes into the calculation is the bad news. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, Keith, the bad news? The EIGRP metric, the composite metric that is made up of the calculations based on the sum of the delays and the bad news? What do you mean? What is bad news? Well, the bad news is, what is the worst bandwidth in the path? And if we look here, it's, I'll put it in a slightly different color. It's this guy. 1.54 megabits per second is the bad news. And here's how that plays out. When R1 advertises the route, the bad news is 10 gig. <laughs> when R2 receives it on this very slow link based on the bandwidth on that link, R2 says, oh, bad news. <laughs> the, the slowest path is 1.5. He advertised that to R3. Now, if R3 advertised that to somebody else, even though R3 learned it on a fast Ethernet interface that's 100 megabits per second, it would still report the worst news in the path. So because R3 learned that the worst news in the path was 1.54, that's what it would continue to advertise. So that's what I mean by the, the worst news. And so when people say that EIGRP, the metric, the composite metric is a function or a calculation based on a sum of the delays and the slowest link in the path, that's what it is. And what, all, what bothered, not bothered me, but what was confusing for a long time when I first started working with Cisco back in the 90s was that how does R3 know what the worst bandwidth is? Like two or three hops away, he doesn't have a neighborship with anybody back there. And we're not sh sharing LSAs like uh, OSPF. And the answer is when we get bad news, we just keep passing the bad news on regarding a specific route. So regarding 10.1.0, when R3 does its calculation, it's going to do it based on a sum of the delays and also the slowest link in the path. And then it runs it through a, a number crunching machine and generates the metric. All right. So that could be, that will be helpful to you as a CCNA to be aware of how the metric is calculated in EIGRP. It's the sum of the delays that goes into that composite metric and also the slowest link in the path. Okay. So having said that, <laughs> Uh, if you would, after you try this lab, and it's so important you practice the labs because that gives you the hands-on practice. You can figure out new things. You're like, why isn't this working? Or why isn't that working? And have discussions. Uh, I encourage you to do the lab. If you've attempted the lab, you've spent a few minutes, download the lab, practice, try to troubleshoot why PC2 can't hit the web server, can't ping the wireless client, go ahead and leave a comment below 
And here's what I'd like you to say. Uh, don't, be, don't do a spoiler alert because other people may want to work on it on their own. But leave a comment, something like, hey, I worked on the lab, or man, what the heck was that? <laughs> or, you know, just the fact that you are committed to practicing and getting better and better. And that's one of the biggest tips I'm sharing with you today to help you get your CCNA is hands-on practice. With Packet Tracer, it's absolutely free. So I look forward to seeing you in the next live event or on the Discord server or any way that this channel can help you or assist you in getting your CCNA. That's what we're here to do. So have a great rest of your day or week or month or whatever time of the world you're in, and I will catch you in the next live event. Bye for now.